Lethal Company. We trust you will be a great asset to the company. I feel that in the genre of gaming, there is a lack of Elden Ridge horrors beyond human comprehension. And Lethal Company really filled that gap. For me, personally at least. From the horrific Bracken Flower Man thing that will snap your neck when you're not looking at it, to the legless shark, land shark thing that will eat you. It's got some really wonderful monsters, so let's talk about all the Lethal Company monsters explained. Starting off with probably the most popular one, the Bracken, also known as the Flower Man. So, kind of like I said before, you know the Enderman in Minecraft, don't look directly at it. This is kind of what the Bracken is like, except not really, because if you, you do have to look at him, but if he's stalking you, look at him for just a second, but not too long, because if you look at him for too long, he will get aggravated and he'll turn red and he'll come in, snap your neck. This thing often hides in the shadows and just lurks and has these glowing white eyes and you'll just see them randomly whenever you turn around which really starts to make you paranoid in the game. So yeah, to keep it from killing you, stare at it for just a second, but then look away. However, if it does kill you, it will actually take your body to some random room in the complex. Before, I had made a short video saying that there was a specific place called the Bracken Room, which looks like the back rooms. Every so often you'll find a random room that looks like it's in the back rooms, but people were saying that's not actually a Bracken Room specifically, it's just a random room and he'll actually take you to some other random room sometimes. You can actually kill the Bracken if you have one of your teammates zap it with a zap gun, and then if you go in and hit it five times with the shovel, or I think you can kill it with a shotgun in two shots, and once you do kill it, it will actually like dissolve into like ash, kind of like whenever Thanos snapped in Endgame, or Infinity War. So this next monster is the Thumper. Like I said in my short video, if I saw this in real life, I definitely would peel my skin off because I feel like that's the only logical thing to do. So I love the lore about these things. In the Beast Era, you can read that these things are actually some sort of shark creature, and it tells that they are hatched in an egg, and to get out of the shell of their egg, they have to eat their own legs off. So those creatures that you see are actually two hands crawling around like this with missing legs. One thing that is good to know is that they are actually completely deaf and can only see, so if they see you, they will attack you, and they're really good at going in straightaways, and they're not too great at turning corners. So if you can run and turn a corner really quick, it's the best way to get away from them, but it doesn't always work. Honestly, for me, it almost never works. It seems like these things are like one of the most OP. And as of the update 45, they can get you whenever you jump up on the rails. So the next are the coil heads. These coil heads are a very freaky monster design. I really like what they did with them. They're kind of similar to the Weeping Angels in Doctor Who. So if you're looking at them, they cannot move, which might make you think, oh, they're not that powerful. You know, just look at them and you can get away, but... No, because if you look away for just a second, they can move super fast. Like, just literally just a second, if you look away, they can kill you. And they run super fast. These are honestly the things that probably do the most wipes of an entire group. Because if nobody's looking out for it and it runs super fast, it can kill everybody that quick. So according to lore, I really like the lore on these two, they speculate that these things are biological weapons of war. And the reason they think this is because they are both organic and inorganic materials and they have a high level of radiation. And in the lore they talk about how they tried to like dissect them and see what they were made of and they just combust whenever they do that. So it brings the question about that's like why are are there weapons of war on these moons? Was there some sort of war in this place? And who's the war against? And when did it happen? And is it the great beast that ate the golden planet that it was? You can hit them with a stun grenade to stop them temporarily. And another good note is whenever they kill you, they will actually rip your head off and replace it with a coil. So it's very poetic. They want you to look like them. Also, just seriously, imagine being at war and you have these massive human looking things that have coils for heads running around and killing anybody that doesn't look at them. I feel like that's beyond just bioweapons. It's like straight up psychological warfare. Okay, the Jester. This is one of the first creatures we will see that is like a toy and a creature mixed. It appears to basically be a jack-in-the-box that has human legs and a human arm and it will wind up its arm and then bust out and have this skull come out and eat every single person in the building if you don't get out in time. These things are very similar to the things I hear 
every night in my walls. When players first find the Jack in the Box in the game, it's actually not a huge threat. It'll just follow you around for a little while, and then it goes into a second phase where it starts winding its arm. And once it's fully wound up playing Pop Goes the Weasel, it springs out, and that's when you have to get out of the building. Or actually, you should probably get out of the building while it starts winding. But once its head pops out, it's going to eat every single person it can get close to. And there's no hiding from it either. It's going to find you. So the eyeless dog, in my opinion, have to be the most misunderstood of all these creatures. Because they're really not super dangerous. They are completely blind and will only kill you if you make a noise. And that noise includes just in your mic. If you make a noise in your mic, if you talk to your friends... It's going to aggravate the dog and it's going to come and kill you. It's kind of like people whenever they get a sweet pit bull and they name it something like Cupcake, like a really, really nice name. Those things are probably going to kill you too. So anyways, yeah, if you see an eyeless dog, if you crouch, not running, if you crouch and you don't make noise in your mic, you should be able to sneak past. However, if you have a radio and you like turn it on or off, that could alert the dog too. And if you do aggravate the dog and alert it and it starts running at you, you can juke the dog because it's often inaccurate and just focuses on the first place where it heard the first noise. Oh my gosh, is it really going to be this easy? Are we really just going to get on the ship and leave? Oh no! Run, 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 run! A smart thing I read online is that people lure the dog away with a boom box or by buying a cheap item from the store and then having the rocket ship come down and deliver it. It'll make all that noise and the thing will go over there. And they should only come out at night. Um, occasionally in other areas they will spawn earlier. I was just playing a game where it spawned at just like 2 p.m. I think that was on March. But yeah, it should at least be later in the day. All right, Ghost Girl. So yeah, along with all these horrific monsters in the game, there's also a ghost. This one is different from other ones because it cannot be touched at all, but it can touch you. So the little girl in the red dress only targets one person at a time. And to everybody else, she is invisible except for the person that she is haunting. So this is kind of complicated. There's a few reasons why she specifically chooses one person to haunt. <sighs> Yeah, my camera died again. Anyways, how the little girl in the red dress will target certain people is based on their different things, like their sanity levels, and that kind of gets a little bit complicated. She'll single out her prey based on a few things, like who's the most paranoid, which just means who looks around the most, looking around for monsters, the person holding the most valuables, and also if someone's alone too long, it can make their insanity level raise too. Anyways, what's different about this monster, except for one other one, the ghost girl will actually leave the complex and follow you out to your ship. She doesn't immediately kill her victims, you'll see her taunting you, she'll be running around, or not running around, she'll be standing, she'll be calling your name, she'll be laughing. Sometimes it'll do like audio distortion, you can't really hear your players are playing with very well. The lights will flicker, different things like that. And finally, whenever she's at the end of her haunt, when she's ready to kill you, she will start skipping towards you. And if she touches you just once, you will die. Keep in mind, this is the rarest enemy in the game. I think I've had her like three or four times, and I've played quite a bit. But anyways, moving on to the Forest Keeper, or the Giant. No. So yes, this thing is a giant. It's not very smart. Um, according to the lore, it has the mind of like a four-year-old child, and it's like teething right now, and that's why it will grab you. Not because it's malicious and it wants to kill you, but because it wants to take you and put it in its mouth. And when it does that, you die. So according to everything I could figure out, it can't hear anything, it can only see you. Even though whenever I said that, it was so controversial and everybody was like, no, it can hear you, but no, it, it can't. What kind of sucks is if there's eyeless dogs around, the eyeless dogs hear super well, the forest keepers see really well, so they make a really deadly team. You don't want to, if you see them together, bad news. It is probably best to leave if you see them both in the same area, but honestly, I feel like the giants are so OP. Like, I have honestly very rarely gotten away from a giant. Like, if they're on you, they will get you. I don't know how the heck you can get away from them. I've seen some videos of people baiting the giants to get into the way of the Earth Leviathan, like the giant worm, you know, Shai Halu, Dune. And they're basically grabbing the people, and right as they're grabbing them, the giant worm comes out of the ground and... One more time. This is the last time... I'm going to try to record, or I'm going to go completely insane. Oh my gosh, it has been three days. I have tried to do this for three days straight. 
I am losing my mind. And basically, the giant worm comes up and eats the giant, and then the person survives, and it's super epic. Those are great clips. Bunker spiders. So, bunker spiders, to people with arachnophobia... Oh, I am wearing my headset right now. So, to people with arachnophobia, bunker spiders are probably the worst things in the game. I don't really care too much about them. They are pretty lethal. Like, if you get bit once by them... You can often die if you have any pre-existing damage from anything else, from falling, whatever. Uh, but these monsters are pretty common. Early into the game, like once you first get into a map, they aren't as deadly because they usually are building their webs. And if you catch them building their webs, they will oftentimes just freeze and not move. If someone walks into their webs, they will actually immediately start chasing that person. And the person can sometimes just be stuck in the web. But that spider will chase you for a long time until you get quite a ways away. So if you get chased by a spider... Try to get as far away as you can from it. If the spider does manage to kill you, it will take your body and then cocoon you like it does prey in real life, you know. You used to be able to just hop up on a railing and get away from them, but as of the update 45, you can't do that anymore. They can get you on the rails. If you get a shovel, you can kill the spider with five hits, but it's really hard to do because two bites will definitely kill you. Hoarding bugs or loot bugs. The bug mafia. These things are basically just giant insects that love to take scrap. If you have scrap in their territory, they are going to want it. You may have to just offer them a piece of scrap to get them to leave you alone. If you take scrap from their nests, they will get super angry with you, so... I don't recommend doing that unless you're just gonna beat it to death. I recommend you beat them to death. If you see them, get a shovel, hit them a few times, and just get rid of them. However, they are actually relatively peaceful. If you see them, they shouldn't normally attack you if you don't have much scrap. But if you're holding scrap and you get too close to them, they will get aggravated and they'll fly and they'll kind of attack you. Yeah, just two hits with the shovel will kill a hoarding bug. Beat them to death. Next is the spore lizard, or as some call them, the leech puppy. Or puffers. People call them puffers too. This thing is basically harmless. Even though it has this massive mouth that looks like it could just chomp you up, it doesn't have a very powerful bite, so you can get bit by it quite a few times and you won't die. They roam the halls of the buildings with their mouths wide open, and they just try to intimidate you by showing their massive jaws. Um, sometimes they will rattle their purple tails, which I believe on their tails is like a fungus or like spores. And those spores go out and they puff out and make your vision all pink. This pink puffy cloud that they make isn't actually dangerous. It just impairs your vision. Okay, the next one is the snare flea. There are bugs under your skin and under mine. And they are the snare fleas. The snare fleas are kind of like those things on Alien. The face huggers, they'll wrap around your face and they don't bite you or sting you. They will just suffocate you to death. According to lore, they're actually a type of centipede that produces this silk. And they'll use the silk to shoot up onto the ceiling and stick up there and wait for someone to walk by and then they'll drop down in. These things don't like open air or sunlight, so if you get teleported out or if you just exit the front door, you can survive these things. But also, if you pick up a shovel, you can swing it and you can knock it off your face, or one of your teammates can hit it with a shovel once and it will fall off it, and then I think you can hit it a few more times and it will die. But yeah, if you walk into a room that has an open vent, it's a good indicator that there is a snare flea around, so... Look at the ceilings, they could definitely get you really easily. If you're playing solo, I heard that they won't kill you. They'll wrap around your face and get you to critical damage, but then they won't completely kill you. Which is nice, because these things would be complete game enders. If you have one on your face, you can also get teleported out. I think I said that earlier, but yeah. The Hygro Deer. People call them blobs or slimes. This is like a big puddle of goo thing that isn't very dangerous. It moves super slow. It's a single-celled organism that, according to the lore, they live for thousands of years, and they can convert any organic matter into their own body flesh. So, that's what it's doing. It is is taking your body and dissolving you and turning it into one of them and so don't step in it if you want to live don't step in it that's how you die you can jump over it most of the times you can get on a railing and trick it to going one area in one area and then just hop over it they can detect heat from anywhere in the dungeon so even if you're on the other side of the entire building they can still sense you from the other side and come towards you 
but I mean, they're really slow. Just jump over them. Placing a boom box makes them gather around the boom box and just stay there. So that is useful if you want to kind of trap them. And I think you can just trap them behind doors too. That might be wrong. You can fact check me on that. I'm sure everybody will. And another fun fact that I read online, the term hygro deer in Latin is a term meaning to get wet baboon hawk so these things i haven't had much experience with until recently i feel like the game developers started putting them in a lot more or maybe i'm imagining that maybe it's because i've been going to march a lot but these things are literally a mix between a monkey and a bird if they get aggravated they will use their beaks to impale you and then eat you so strategy for not getting skewered by them intimidation works really well um, if you face them directly and you make noises, you can kind of scare them away. Being in groups really helps. They don't like to attack people that are in groups larger than them. So if there's only one of them, if you have two people, they should attack. But I was just playing a game where they just attacked me when I was with two other people. So I guess maybe that's not always correct. But staying in groups really helps. Facing them, making loud noises helps. So the baboon hawk can be hit six times with the shovel before it dies. So you can oftentimes beat it to death, which is really nice. I love being able to beat animals to death in this game. According to the lore in this game, they usually only like eating small mammals. However, if they are in large numbers and they're kind of desperate, they'll go after larger things, which includes eyeless dogs. There are videos you can find where baboon hawks will attack eyeless dogs, and I don't think I've ever seen them actually win. I think the eyeless dogs just absolutely destroy them, which is exactly what I would expect to happen. Those eyeless dogs are built, you know? They got that dog in them. So yes, eyeless dogs will get in confrontations with the baboon hawks. I really want to see it. I haven't yet, but I'll probably just yoink someone's video and show you. Okay, the Earth Leviathan, or the Giant Worm, or Shy Halut. So these are giant worm things that I'm pretty sure is just a Dune reference. They stay underground, and they can sense just the slightest movements on top of the ground so even if you're crouching they can still know where you're at no matter what whenever they're about to come out of the ground a whole bunch of little black particles start rising and as soon as you see that the best move is just to run as quick as you can out of that ring of black particles so if you're fast enough, you can get out. Usually, if you have a bunch of heavy stuff, drop that and just leave. It's going to take your stuff, but it's worth your life sometimes. But yeah, like I said before, sometimes those giants can be eaten by the Earth Leviathan. They mainly do come out at night. Sometimes they won't randomly on random maps. And according to the lore, they burrow 40 meters below the ground. And yeah, they can detect the slightest vibrations on the top of the ground. Okay, next are the new monsters from Update 45. The first and... And most terrifying, I think it's the best though, I think this is the best thing I've added to the game for sure, is the Masked, or the Mimics, or you can call them Skinwalkers if you want to, because that's basically what they are. So if you really, if you didn't think this game was scary before, oh my gosh, the Masks are basically a piece of scrap, and you have com- You guys, you guys won't believe what just happened. <laughs> One of these days, my camera's not gonna die, and I'm gonna get through an entire video without having extreme catastrophic failures in all of my equipment. But that day is not today. So the masks are actually items you can find in the game. You can either find the smiling one, which is comedy, or the frowning one, which is tragedy. The comedy mask, you can hit the action button when you're holding it to try to kind of put it on, and it won't immediately stay on your face. However, if you put the tragedy mask on, it will instantly turn you into a masked, which means you become one of those monsters that looks just like people that is running around in the dungeon, but it's wearing a mask, and it has mannerisms just like everybody else. We'll get into that in just a second. However, you can still get turned into a mask with the comedy mask. It says that if you use the action button while holding the mask, there's a 65% chance of becoming a masked for every five seconds you do this. These masks are obviously like SCP-035. So you can just find the mask as an item in the game, like I was just saying, but you can also find people that look just like players wearing masks randomly on uh, different moons like Rend or Titan. These masked people will imitate like everything people do. It's really freaky. They'll look around corners, they'll stop, they'll stare, they'll spin around. So like if you're running the cameras and you're looking at the screens and you see a person spinning around, which usually that means that they want to be warped in. If they're doing that, 
a lot. They pretty much could be a mask. It's very likely they could be a mask. They can also sprint, which is really scary when they do that. You can kill them pretty easily with the shovel. I folded a few the other day when I was playing. And what's really horrifying about the mask is they will sometimes just go into the ship and hide and wait for players to come into the ship and then they will attack them. I've even had one walking while looking the other direction so I couldn't see its face, but it came towards me while facing the other direction. And it made it to where I couldn't tell if it was a person or not until it got really close to me. But yeah, if you just get touched once by the mask, you will also turn into a mask. And it makes the game that much more dangerous for all the other players that are in there. And what's nice is the mask will always wear the regular decoy suit. They'll wear the orange. So if you change all the suits of the players you're playing with, it's easier to identify who is not a actual human. But yeah, hit it with a shovel. The other new character in Update 45 is the Nutcracker. So I recently found out that these things won't just shoot you. They have a, the Nutcracker has a shotgun, obviously, and it's a double-barreled shotgun, so it'll shoot once, shoot twice, and then it will reload. But along with shooting a shotgun, it will kick you sometimes. If you get too close to it, it'll kick you, which is an instant kill. So, well, so is the shotgun blast, pretty much. If you're close to it, you get hit with the shotgun, you're dead. But it can also kick you and kill you instantly, too. So it is an appropriate name. The name Nutcracker, it will kick you directly in the nuts. Yes. What's interesting about it is it seems to be like another messed up toy type thing, kind of like the Jester, which makes you wonder if these things are also biological weapons of war. But also what's interesting is unlike the Jester, or the coil head it seems like there is a living creature inside like if you watch it it'll walk and then it will open up its mask and it will look around and it's like this fleshy looking alien thing with one eye and it'll look around you can actually squat get down away, if you away, see the nutcracker walking around and it stops and opens up its thing just squat down and don't move at all and you can actually avoid being detected by it according to the beast theory, you know the lore in the game it calls these things the watchers of the house and what's interesting about this thing is it's the only thing that will go out and kill monsters and humans with no prejudice it will just go it'll kill monsters it'll kill people i haven't seen it kill monsters actually yes i have seen it kill monsters i saw it kill a bracken one time um strategy for killing it you can hide behind a wall or a bookshelf or something and let it shoot twice and then you and a buddy run up hit it with the shovel a bunch of times you can kill it and it takes five hits with the shovel to kill it and once you do kill it you can actually pick up its shotgun and use it um both of the shotgun shells also take a slot so pick those up load them into the gun immediately but yeah it's really interesting that shotgun super powerful if you get your hands on the shotgun you can kill a lot of stuff i i love it i wish there was more shotguns in the game it would probably make it a lot easier anyways there's one more monster i have not talked about yet and that is jeb so jeb also known as the company monster is that giant tentacle thing that we see take our scrap whenever we give it to the company building. So whenever you fly to 71 Gordian, I think that's the planet's name, you take all your scrap, put it on the counter, that tentacle comes out and grabs it, and then what people don't know is once your scrap is sold, you can either get a default voice line, you know what keeps the company happy, or you have a roughly 3% chance of getting a rare voice line. We need you. There's different voice lines like the company must stay happy. The company must stay happy. The company must... And so some people think that it's actually Jeb, the monster behind the wall, saying these voice lines. But me personally, I think it's actually the company that has pre-recorded these messages and they're playing them back after you sell your stuff. So when it says the company must stay happy, that makes me think that there was a company that was created by people in the solar system to house a horrible evil. And I think that's exactly what it is. It's a horrible evil behind the wall. It makes me think that there is horrible consequences for, for not keeping the company happy. If the company's not happy, horrible things are happening. That's, that's my opinion. Another rare voice line is the walls cannot contain me or this wall cannot contain it. I think it's saying this wall cannot contain it. This wall cannot contain it. Because it's like a warning that if we don't feed this thing, the walls alone won't keep it in there. It's going to get hungry, it's going to bust through the walls, and that's going to be a huge problem. And one last thing is keep our investors happy. Keep our investors happy. So this makes me think that there's a whole solar system of people that are the investors that are united to pay for keeping this thing happy because if it's not happy, their lives are going to end and the entire solar system is done. Because... I think that Jeb, the monster behind the wall, is like an interplanetary traveler that if it got out, it would 
go and start eating planets. So Sigurd's logs, the logs that you can read on the computer or that you pick up throughout the game, his logs talk about how one time he was at the company when through his radio he heard a voice saying that they were behind the wall and they started talking about this. In their world, it's like a story that's made up about a golden planet that was swallowed up by a giant beast. And apparently it's a very famous story, the way he talked about it in his logs. Oh, this is just a children's bedtime story, but... No, it seems that Sigurd has maybe found a group of people that have been consumed or detained by this monster behind the wall. And I just think it's all connected. I definitely think that the golden planet was swallowed by some sort of beast. And maybe that beast is the giant tentacle monster behind the wall and it's Jeb. Also, it's worth noting, if you don't know already, below the deck at the company building on 71 Gordian, there is a giant drill that is facing the company wall where Jeb is. And there's like a little circle drawn on the wall, like that's the area where they're going to drill into. And it makes me think that they're either drilling in to kill the monster, release the monster, or release the people that are in there that have been trapped by Jeb. And also written on the drill is don't tell. So it makes me think that this was like a secret project and that people were doing this to spite the company or maybe they're trying to do it to figure out who the company was or what the company was doing. And if the company found out, they would stop what they were doing or they would punish them. You know how they punish people. And this drill has the ability to put two apparatuses in it or two of those nuclear things in it, but we can't do it yet. It's not in the game. You can't really, you can bring them to there, but you can't actually do it and so that is all the lethal company monsters explained thank you guys for watching all my videos um if you're here for my shorts thanks for watching stick around i'll be doing some more cool stuff if you like incredibly weird stuff there is something wrong with you and you are just like me because we are deranged um we have all been lobotomized you are one of us that have also had a lobotomy and thank you for doing that it is a great service to Anyways, you're just like me for real. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.